In this video, I'm gonna share with you five habits that I do every single day to stay in shape. And these aren't like chores to me, they're uh, habits that I've really integrated as part of my lifestyle. So whether you wanna lose body fat or build muscle, I promise that incorporating some of these habits can help you get there more quickly and also more effectively. So the problem that so many people have with establishing healthy habits that stick is that they're trying to do things every day that are totally unrealistic, that they can't can't keep up for many years at a time. So they're trying to like never eat carbs, uh, like ever. They're trying to never have one gram of sugar. They're trying to do like an hour or more of cardio every single day. And if they miss it, they think that they've messed up. So today you're gonna see the habits that I focus on, really how simple they are and how I make it a lifestyle. So right now I'm putting together my pre-workout snack. Uh, I work out first thing in the morning, so I don't actually have my first cooked meal until a few hours after my workout. But making sure to have a proper pre-workout nutrition is something that's gonna give me some fuel for the workout if you do it properly. And it's gonna make sure that I have a better quality workout like 90% of the time. So today for my pre-workout, I love to have fruit. So I'm having 200 grams of weight worth of pineapple, which I just weighed out on the food scale. So this is actually about 26 grams of carbs. Um, and then I'm also having this uh, high fiber granola bar. There's nine grams of fiber in here, but it is getting me um, 20, 29 grams of carbs, only four grams of fat and three grams of protein. So between the two of these, I'm getting almost 60 grams of carbs for only four grams of fat and only three grams of protein. And in my pre-workout snack, what I'm aiming for is really focusing on those carbs because that's what's gonna give me fuel for the workout. Getting in some additional protein is also good in the pre-workout, there's nothing wrong with that. But dietary fat is what I'm typically trying to avoid or, or limit specifically in the pre-workout snack because it's gonna slow down the digestion process, which you don't want to have a bunch of food feeling like it's in your stomach still digesting when you're doing a workout. So that's what I have right here. And usually for my pre-workout snack, it's something similar to this. So one thing you'll see me doing all day is diligently tracking my food in the MyFitnessPal app, which is used to track your calories and your macros. And that's the first habit that I practice every single day, which is tracking my macros. So tracking your food and knowing how much you're eating is literally step one for being able to lose weight or even gain muscle very predictably. Because the truth is if you don't know exactly how much you're eating in a day, you're pretty much guessing and hoping that whatever you're eating and whatever meals you're putting together are gonna lead to the results that you want, but you don't know for a fact. And this is one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make is that they try to eat clean, they try to eat healthy foods, but ultimately it's still a guessing game of kind of wishing and hoping that this stuff that they're eating is gonna lead to losing weight. And me personally, I don't have any interest in playing those guessing games. Uh, I'd rather just know for sure. I'd rather have a plan that I know is very calculated, very predictable, and as long as I execute, you know, eating this amount of food, that it's gonna lead to the results that I want. And by the way, I can do this every single day, tracking my food pretty much with ease because it really doesn't take a long time. That's one of the uh, knocks on tracking your food. People complain that it takes a long time. But the truth is it takes maybe 10 minutes a day if you're a beginner. And for me, I've checked my screen time on multiple occasions. It takes me between four and six minutes a day in the MyFitnessPal app to diligently track my food. That's not a lot to ask, right? Especially compared to doing a workout. There's people who say that tracking your food takes too long. They don't want to spend that five minutes a day to track their food, but then they'll go and do an hour and a half of cardio every single day. How about you just reduce your workout by five minutes and spend that time tracking your food because that's really what's going to lead to the results that you want. And because it is so quick and it takes so little time out of your day, that's why I've been able to do it day after day for many years now. And the great thing about MyFitnessPal and any other app you choose to track track your food with is that they save the foods that you log. Like for example, the pineapple I've got here, it saves it in my food log. So the next time I go to enter in pineapple, it already has it listed from my history. And it literally takes a second to select something you've already eaten in the past. So once you track it once, you don't have to figure out how to track it again. And tracking your food, I've seen this with dozens of clients over the years. It's like anything else. It's like riding a bike. It's like your career, whatever industry you're 
you're in, it's like playing a sport. The more you do it, the easier it gets, the better you get at it, and the less and less time it takes. And we also tend to track and monitor things that are important to us. Just like your finances, your expenses, your bills, your various income sources, it's no different keeping track of your food. But that's it for this. We're gonna head out and go to the gym and hit a pull workout. And I'm hoping to show you some clips from that, so let's get going. So we're in the car, obviously, and we're on the way to the gym. And that is the second habit that I practice which is working out, strength training. And this isn't something that I do every single day. It's not something that I recommend to my clients that they do seven days a week, but I really like to work out more days than not. So whether that's four, five, or even sometimes six times a week, that's what I really like to do because I know that I feel better on days that I work out. Uh, I have more energy, I have more mental focus. I, I just feel more productive, but your mood is elevated anyone who works out consistently will tell you that they feel better on days that they work out. So we just finished the pull workout. I thought it was a really good workout. What do you think, Morgan? Yeah, definitely gonna feel it tomorrow, that's for sure. Yeah, we've been pretty sore the last uh, couple weeks from these workouts. We've been training together recently and it's been going really well. So the third daily habit that I practice every single day is trying to drink about a gallon of water per day. Now there's nothing special about a gallon or 128 ounces. Maybe for you it's 90 ounces or maybe it's 168 ounces, a gallon and a half. The point mainly is just to be hydrated, always be in a state of being hydrated and mainly to not be dehydrated because when we're dehydrated, we can feel feelings of hunger and cravings and it can impact other areas, it can impact our workouts. So what I do is this, you may have noticed uh, earlier in the video, I was filling up that big jug of water. It was a half gallon jug of water so it's 64 ounces I fill that thing up first thing in the morning every day and I start drinking it it's the first thing that I consume before any coffee or any pre-workout or any snacks or food I drink about 20 ounces of it and then what I do is I pour another 20 or 30 ounces into my shaker bottle here and I bring it to the gym and I drink it throughout the course of my workout and then I drink another 20 ounces in my post-workout shake, which I usually just fill up in here. I put my protein powder in there, and that way I've gotten in half a gallon, or about 64 ounces, between the time I wake up and just a couple hours later when I'm done with my workout. And then obviously I fill up that big jug again a second time in the day. So really, I find that it's really convenient to just have to count to two, to fill that big jug up twice, rather than what some people do, which is they have a smaller water bottle and they try to fill it up eight, nine, 10 times throughout the day. It's pretty easy to lose count. And especially as people who are very active and are working out consistently and possibly doing some cardio and getting in plenty of steps, it's really important to stay hydrated and um, it can help with more energy, it can help with more alertness, more uh, better cognitive function. Like I said before, curbing hunger and cravings. So there's a lot of health benefits to drinking plenty of water. And mainly you just don't want to be someone who's dehydrated. So it's a few hours later now after the workout, I had my post-workout shake, which is usually two scoops of protein and some sort of carb source, whether it's another piece of fruit or whether it's like some toast or something like that. But now it's a few hours later and I'm having my first cooked meal of the day. So I've got here two thinly sliced chicken breast. I've got some broccoli on the side. And that's my fourth daily habit that I try to practice every day, which is trying to get in a fruit and a vegetable in every single day. Ideally, trying to get a vegetable in each meal that I eat, but it's not always gonna be realistic. I'm not always gonna be able to do that. So at least one vegetable per day is what I aim for, and at least one fruit each day. So tracking my macros is helpful for the aesthetics side of fitness and building the physique that I want but the micronutrients, which is vitamins and minerals and fibers in vegetables and in fruits, that's more the health 
health side of fitness. That's making sure that you're eating a balanced diet, staying as healthy as you can stay, and that's why I personally try to aim for at least getting in some vegetables and some fruits in each day. So I'm in my home office right now, and I'm replying to some client check-ins. Each week, uh, each of my clients gives me some feedback on how the week went, how they're doing, what sorts of things they need help with, and I reply back to their check-in with a voice message giving them direction on what they should focus on for the upcoming week and if they should make any adjustments to their program. And this is mainly for accountability, but also to make sure that they're on the right path and seeing the results that they wanna see. But about a year ago, I got this under the desk walking pad uh, which helps me stay active during the day. Even though I'm working pretty much a sedentary job, I work from home, I'm on my laptop all day, doing client check-ins and programming and stuff like that. So it really helps me to get my steps up even though I'm working at a desk all day. And I don't walk on it all day long. I maybe use it an hour or two per day, some days more than others. But even walking slowly at this speed, it can really help get your steps count up, even just using it for an hour. And this is the fifth habit that I try to aim for each and every day, which is trying to get to 10,000 steps every day. And just like I said before about there's nothing magical about drinking a gallon of water specifically each day. There's nothing magical about reaching 10,000 steps per day. So for you, maybe the number should be 8,000 or maybe it should be 5,000 or, or 20,000. But for me, I find that it's actually pretty convenient because I naturally get in about six or seven or 8,000 steps per day if I wasn't paying attention to them at all. And what I wanna do is aim for a number that's just slightly higher than what I would get naturally. So I wanna have something to strive to do a little bit more than I typically would. And for me, 10,000 is perfect because I do have to go out of my way a little bit to get it, but it's very realistic and it's very attainable. And the reason why this is like one of the top five things that I try to do every single day is because staying active away from your workouts is super important for overall health. You can work out five or six days a week, but if you're incredibly sedentary in the other 23 hours of the day, you may not be as healthy as you think you are, especially cardiovascular wise and heart health. And when it comes to like the physique side of fitness and the goals of like losing body fat, building muscle, looking your best physically, the more steps you can get in per day and the more active you are, the easier it's gonna be to stay lean and keep a low body fat percentage. But for me, the aesthetics side of fitness and physique side is not my motivation in wanting to really prioritize steps, but it's more because of the health benefits of it and newer research coming out in recent years showing that those who get in more steps per day actually live longer from all cause mortality. And I know that if I can consistently get 10,000 or more steps most days, that I'm gonna be at a lower risk of certain heart diseases, which by the way, heart disease kills one in three people. In America, at least it does, and it's totally preventable through consistent exercise and a healthy diet. So those are the five daily habits that I practice each day to stay in shape, to stay healthy, and to make this a lifestyle. There are definitely other things that I do in my fitness and with my program, but they may not be every day, and they may not be top priority to make sure that I'm checking that box off every single day. But thank you so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments below if you do any of these five daily habits already or if there are any of them that you're going to add into your routine now. I really hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, consider subscribing because I make new videos just like this every single week, just like this other one that I think you'll really like. I'm gonna leave it right at the top here and I'll see you over there.